Hey, this is Indextic, and you are watching my speedrun of the darkness in 1 hour, 47 minutes, 51 seconds. This is the world record as of December 15th, or was it 14th? One of the two. Uh, 2012, and I expect it to stay that way for a very long time, as at the moment I'm the only one that runs the game and I have no plans to continue with this category because I am satisfied with this time. Um, to start, there are a couple audio issues with this video, so um, about every half hour or so I believe. It might jump around a bit. Shouldn't be that bad, I think. <laughs> I spent a lot of time syncing it up. I hope that it's okay. Sorry if it's not. Hope you can bear with it. Um, another thing before I get started, to those that are familiar with the game and familiar with my stream, I'm trying to make this commentary that would inform somebody that has never played the game before, so if I say a lot of things that kind of seem obvious, just bear with me, okay? Um, so, the darkness starts off with this cutscene, just kind of uh, explaining who your character is, kind of, in a way. Like, he's in the mob, whatever. That's, you don't give a shit about that, you're watching a speedrun. Um, the main thing you need to know about this game is basically just how it works. It's just a basically your normal gimmicky first-person shooter with um, you get four darkness powers throughout the throughout the game. You start with one and then you acquire the other three later on. Um, there's the creeping dark, which is kind of like a little snake thing. Uh, it can go decently far and attack enemies, interact with some objects. You'll be seeing some of that in this run. Uh, the second one you get, the most important one, is the demon arm. And that allows you to grab objects and throw them at people, or actually st stab people with them, or take out lights. Uh, I guess I should explain that as well. <laughs> uh, I'll do that after this. The third power is the darkness guns. They have absolutely no use in this run. Uh, I don't really like them <laughs> very much. I think they could be incorporated, but... Whatever. <laughs> um, and the fourth is the black hole. That is a, basically a giant void that just sucks up any enemy, takes out any light that it's near. Very useful, but it takes up your entire darkness energy, which is what we'll get into now. You have a limited amount of darkness energy throughout, uh, well, while you're playing the game, basically. <laughs> um, and as you use your darkness powers, or as you take hits or stand in light, that power decreases. And once it runs out, then you have no shield and no darkness powers. You are basically on your own, like a normal first-person shooter. That is absolutely not what you want, so a lot of this run is spent trying to stay out of the light, taking out lights, or eating hearts of enemies, because when you do that, it replenishes your darkness energy and allows you to continue on through the light while still using your darkness powers. So you'll be seeing a lot of that throughout the run. Um, another thing you'll be seeing a lot of is walking diagonally. Um, if you're familiar with Goldeneye, you may know that strafing with the C buttons is actually faster than just walking forward. Uh, funny enough, that's the same case for this game, except I don't have C buttons to just walk sideways, so I actually have to walk diagonally at basically all times. It's about 30% um, faster, I believe. I'm not quite sure on that. But it's a lot faster, basically. And it saves a lot of time throughout the run. This cutscene's just coming to a close now. Get past these two guys, and then you actually get some control. The shooting in this cutscene actually doesn't matter at all. It's just kind of something silly that they throw in to make you feel like you're actually doing something. But you're not. You're useless, basically. <laughs> and here's the introduction of the monologues. Uh, on basically every loading screen, you get some kind of monologue from Jackie, and beyond this point, you actually get to see him at the time. It's just kind of something silly that they added to the loading screens. It's just... I don't know. I, I kind of like them. Some of them are pretty interesting, but some of them are really cheesy. Um, here I would be mashing back and pressing start to skip the title screen 
and to open up the journal, but I fucked it up in this run, so you actually see this animation. Normally, he would just be laying on the ground and then spring right up because I did it so fast that the game basically doesn't recognize that I did it. Um, but at the same time, it does? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I don't understand it. Anyway. So, there's Mikey. I walk away from him to basically skip him talking. I do that again so that he'll pull out the guns immediately and I can take them. You're going to see a lot of that in this run as well. When you walk away from some people, um, basically they'll stop talking and skip to the end of what they're saying, which is a lot faster than wading through it, obviously. So, there'll be a lot of times where I kind of walk away from somebody as they're talking to me. It's pretty useful. Although, if you're in an actual conversation mode, and you get into that, then it would actually cost a lot of time. There are a couple points where that could happen, but it generally doesn't unless you touch the control stick. I go over here to pick up two guns, although apparently I only picked up one this run, and then I kill those two guys also for their guns, because you're kind of scarce on ammo throughout the entire run. Um, the ammo is actually just different guns, you don't hold ammo, it's kind of funny. Just running past all these guys now. Um, I have to take the elevator in this room, so I try to take out all three guys. I don't think it goes well. Yeah, this guy survives. But I can shoot him as I'm going up. Or not. Okay, apparently I almost die. Wow, this run sucks. What the hell? <laughs> and this is setting up for a jump to skip the little crouch tutorial section. Uh, basically, to the right, you'd have to crouch through or under a little box thing, and that skips it, so saves a good 5-10 seconds. Hey. And that's the intro. Me and Paulie never did agree about the way things were being done. Paulie took the business into selling drugs, working side by side with the cops. When I was growing up, the family had codes. We did business. We looked out for the people. I believe we... I saw him! He came out the window! Down there! Where is he? I don't see him anymore. Interesting thing I noticed while I was doing this run is that the loading screens were actually going faster than normal. Only by like a split second. Um, I don't know what was causing it, but... I probably saved a couple seconds over the course of the entire run, just due to that. So I shoot this guy in here because you're supposed to go down there and talk to him, but if he's dead then it just kind of triggers it uh, anyway. You could just walk up to him and then walk away, but um, since in any percent there's no reason for him to be alive, I just kill him as soon as I see him. In 100% you would actually want to keep him alive because he gives you a collectible, but collectibles are completely useless for any percent because they're only for unlocking content they don't really add to anything at all this is where it introduces the darkness powers here's the creeping dark the demon arm was being used to hold that guy up I don't really know why it gives you well shows you all the powers in the beginning and then doesn't let you use any of them I don't know it's kind of silly that's the black hole of course And these four guys are dead. You are nothing but my puppet. And then you'll see eating hearts. Eat that guy's heart. And this gives me the Darklings. Darklings are little creatures that kind of help you out throughout the game. They're not really that useful. Um, there are a couple spots where I use it in the run, but overall, not that useful. You get four of them. Um, throughout the entire run. I only use... Uh, actually, I use three of them. <laughs> Most of them you need to use at one point, but I skipped the thing that you need the Kamikaze Darkling for. And I'm just kind of going around the cemetery here, eating hearts, while I wait for the Darkling to open the gate. Because... Oh my god, fuck that guy. Anyway. <laughs> um, the more hearts you eat, the higher your darkness level will be, and once I get to 15, that means that I'm at um, the darkness level 2, and 
basically what that means is I get more darkness energy, so I can take more hits, I can stay in the light longer, I can use my powers longer. Um, it's just basically really useful. Uh, this run, I'm not actually sure if it would be as fast if I didn't have darkness level 2. Because there are some skips that I'm not sure if I'd be able to make it to the end of. Plus, I would not be able to take nearly as many hits, which you really need to be able to do later on in the game. Especially chapter 5. The end of chapter 5, which is the end of the game. Okay, the subway stations in this game, I cannot <laughs> begin to explain how much I hate them. Because the entire time while you're walking around, there are all these pedestrians that are just walking around minding their own business, and I can't see them because I'm walking sideways. So very often I'll find myself walking into them, <laughs> and they'll like be in my way. It's so terrible. Oh my god, there have actually been times where it's gotten so bad that I've ended a run because <laughs> because of how much they were in my way, basically. Or like, they made it so that it would be really hard for me to get by. I don't know. Just entering Chinatown now. I wait to pull out the darkness here so that I can keep as much energy while I'm getting shot rather than run out around here and then actually take damage. It doesn't really matter. Like... <laughs> I don't think you can die there unless you don't pull it out at all, but I just kind of do that to be safe, I guess. And then you go up here to talk to Jenny, who's pager... well, not pager, her... she pages you as soon as you enter the subway station. You ignore it because you're a you're dick, basically. I do a lot of playing around in this run here. I just kind of hide from her because I think that's really funny because I'm an immature little... Anyway. Uh, there's also a lot of pointless stuff like this in the run because you can't skip it. Basically, a lot of Chapter 1 is just kind of plot stuff and kind of <laughs> walking around. Not a whole lot of action, unfortunately. blowing out the candles. This really terrible glitch actually where she won't start talking about the cake and you'll just kind of stand there in front of it. And I don't know if there's actually a way to make her talk about it. But like I ended at least three runs to it. I would just walk in, look at the cake and she'd stand there by the door not saying anything. <laughs> it's terrible. I choose the second text option here because it gives the least amount of exchanges between the two. The top one, I believe, gives eight, and I think the bottom one gives four or six, and the middle one just gives two, so I picked that one. Now for one of the greatest phone calls ever. Um, this is me calling Butcher to just activate another objective. There are some objectives in this game that won't um, you won't be able to complete unless they're actually active in your journal. Some of them aren't. I don't really understand it. I don't jump immediately off the rail from here, because if you jump from the top, well not the top, but like where you were at Jenny's apartment, there's a kill plane, and <laughs> you just kind of see yourself splat against the ground. Oh, this is an embarrassing moment here. I try to eat this guy's heart, but apparently his body went way over there, and I just kind of decide, fuck it, it's not worth it. A really bad waste of time. The, in <laughs> the beginning of this run is honestly not very good, but the rest of it most of the rest of it makes up for it. Some parts of Chapter 3 are also kind of shitty, but like not worth doing another run to try and fix them, because there's so much in this run that can go wrong. It's... I don't know. I guess you wouldn't really notice it just watching a run. A funny thing about this, I don't eat either of those guys' hearts. I used to, but then when I would go to this loading zone, for some reason, it would take a really long time to actually get to the monologue part, and I didn't know why. Then I figured out, if you enter a loading zone while you're eating a heart, it takes a really long time to get to the actual loading part, and I don't know why it does that. I guess there was probably like some glitch uh, in development. I don't know. This is just me playing around again while I wait for... Uh, while I wait to be able to pick up the body that Butcher has in his place. <laughs> I was trying to get a view of Out of Bounds. You can't actually get Out of Bounds in here, unfortunately, 
but you can kind of poke your head out and see out of bounds. It's kind of cool, but unfortunately I didn't really get it. It's not that big of a deal. Can't you people make your hits at a reasonable time of the day, huh? No way to speed this up at all, unfortunately. Not even walking diagonally with the body actually makes you go faster, I think. Never really tested it, no reason to, but it doesn't seem like it. Instead, some moron puts a bullet right between Jeff Helmet's eyes. Ah, what are you gonna do? Just drop it in the trunk. I'll take care of it. Not a whole lot to talk about here, I suppose. Like I said, a lot of Chapter One is just kind of going around doing things. Not a lot of action. Although right after this, there is the right. shootout. Good enough. The lower East Side. It's kind of interesting. What happened to you tonight? Listen, don't you? You don't. <sighs> Can walk away from Butcher early there because the objective activates right when he says "fuck the cops" or whatever. Uh, I shot that out so that the lights would go out. Obviously, it's a lot better than kind of shooting them out individually. What I'm doing here is aiming for where a cop is about to appear. I don't need to shoot him. It's not necessary, because you can still get by him just fine. I, I just kind of do it to be safe, so that I'm not getting shot by two cops, because there are two that get out of that car. I pull out a Darkling here so that the SWAT team guys that come out of that van uh, will be distracted basically because I guess if there's a darkling present they all draw their attention towards it so that allows me to just take them out uh, a lot quicker there's also a funny glitch where if you get the darkling in front of the truck it actually can't back up past it so it kinda gets stuck there and the SWAT guys will spawn in the air it's kinda funny this door took a lot longer to open than normal I have no control over when that opens, and it just kind of seemed to sit there for longer than usual. There are, are some random moments like that. Actually, there's one coming up right now. Um, the way you would normally open this gate is to use the, cr the, the creeping dark into that vent up there, but I just summon a darkling and he will open the gate for me, which is much faster. This is where the audio fucks up. So... Yeah, there it is. Should be back in sync now. I ate this guy's heart, although I didn't need to. I'm not quite sure why I did that. <laughs> this dumpster is finicky to get over. I actually didn't know you could jump over that for the longest time. I think it took me like maybe eight months before I knew you could jump over that. It's kind of funny. Listen, the best way to my Uncle Paulie's heart is through his rib cage with a meat cleaver. Failing that, you screw up his distribution and let the Chicago people collect on him. Now, I've been all over town picking up... Here's another spot where I'll use the Darkling to open a door. Basically, as soon as you kill that guy, you can summon a Darkling inside of there, and then he'll come over and open the door. There's a terrible glitch, though, where if he's not completely dead, the Darkling will attack him and then everybody else. It's bad. You don't need to actually kill anybody in here except for the Doorman and um, Roach, who is the guy that I killed. Because once Roach is dead, then this ladder drops, and you can continue on. There's one other spot like that in the game. Well, actually, no. You have to kill everybody in the in Grinder's Lane for you to be able to burn the money. That's coming up just after this. That guy kicks a chair at you. He's a dick. It's sometimes hard to get past. Sometimes you can jump over it, or it just like goes right over you. <laughs> That's a funny glitch where if you kill somebody and do an execution kill at the same time, um, their dead body will be there and you're just kind of shooting air. 
I haven't explained execution kills. I'm terrible at this commentary thing. Execution kill happens when you are right up close to somebody and you shoot. It does this kind of little animation thing where you kill them in some crazy badass way. I don't know. I don't really get the point. They do waste time though, so I try to avoid them wherever possible. Although they save ammo, you're kind of standing in one spot for a couple seconds, which is obviously not what you want. Uncle Paul is pretty much a scumbag. Not that anyone has the balls to tell him to his face. Paul, he took me out of an orphanage I lived in after my parents died. It's kind of like being... Coming up is one of the longest waiting points, I guess. Not waiting points, but... You have to sit through a few minute long um, news thing. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Dangerous. Never sat in the back of a yellow cab, going the wrong way, at 90 miles an hour, through the Midtown Tunnel, with a guy who can't speak a lick of English. My buddy, Crazy Abdul. <laughs> that actual cutscene that you just saw plays a lot throughout the run. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's. Um, I think it's the most common uh, loading screen for when you're entering a subway station, so it plays a lot. And I guess a lot of people in this stream kind of were making jokes about it because it's such a silly loading screen. You kind of miss the last four words because I installed the game on the Xbox, so he doesn't say them. But it's just about how some friend of his, Crazy Abdul, is terrible taxi driver or something. It's just... It's just silly. <laughs> I always found this sign kind of funny, in a way. Because the bottom prices are all the same. I don't know why they're included. Okay. And then I kind of walk over here and talk to whatever pe pedestrian there is. You cool? What's the word? This guy talks to me a lot, I'm surprised. It's usually they talk to me twice and they just kind of stare me down. I guess once you talk to a pedestrian enough, they just kind of stop talking. It's kind of strange. But yeah, I just kind of stare at them while I wait for the news report to be over. I just think it's kind of funny to stare somebody down in the middle of a speedrun. I'm telling you, those first chapters are terrible. <laughs> that shaking is generally when I know to walk back. Move along, pal. Jane, we've been asked you. to leave the area. It's not safe for us to be here. All right, thank you, Matt. Stay tuned for more information on this developing story on Newswatch 6. Hey, good to see you, Jackie. Listen, I wish we could be meeting Introduction in better circumstances, Grape. but you know the way things are. Not really anything oh important God, for a speedrun. This is so awful. No one's heard from Sister Mary. The police said it was some kind of a gas main explosion, but it feels like they're hiding... Well, some something. small annoyance here. <laughs> For some reason, you can't skip this part of the text. I don't know why. Well, not the text, the dialogue. I don't know why you can't skip it. But you just can't. Here's another walking away from somebody while they're talking to skip everything they say. Jimmy talks for a long time, too. So, that's pretty useful. Now we're going to Grinder's Lane, which um, I wouldn't say is a hard part of the run, but I guess in a way it's inconsistent. I kind of ran into a pole there. I'm kind of dumb in the subway. Again, I can't really see where I'm going. <laughs> but Grinder's Lane is really strange because basically you have to kill every single enemy in there. You can't leave one of them alive. Here's the thing. Sometimes they like to be dicks and just kind of lay on the ground looking dead, but they're actually kind of laying there in pain, still alive. And that can actually ruin an entire run. Just not noticing that they're sitting there like that. It's pretty bad. So you come over here, shoot the little power thing, and I guess that lets you in. 
And to burn the money, um, you need that gas canister. You're supposed to, like, realize that you need it afterwards, but you can just grab it um, then. Doesn't really matter. I put away the darkness here to actually kind of store the energy so that I have it there rather than walking through the light. I got really lucky with this grinder's lane because where that guy landed is not usually where he is. This is probably one of my best grinder's lanes, if not my best ever. Summon a gunner darkling there so that he opens the door. Again, skipping using the creeping dark to open a door. And everybody's dead. Can burn the money. Very fast. Although I end up behind the table and kind of get stuck on a chair for a second there. But other than that, that was an extremely good grinder's lane. Let's kind of hop over the wall there. You don't need to walk out. I saved, I think, 20 seconds on that split when I was doing the run, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the grinder's lane in my previous run was also one that I considered pretty good, so that should say a lot about the quality of that grinder's lane. <laughs> I practiced the hell out of grinder's lane because back when I first started running this game, <laughs> I was doing it segmented? I don't really know why. <laughs> I, I have no idea why. <laughs> um, but yeah, I practiced the hell out of like everything in Chapter 1, and that's when I noticed how bad Grinder's Lane was, so... No pun intended, I grinded the hell out of it. I still don't know why I wanted to segment this game. When you for a living, <laughs> life's only I don't know. To be staring down the barrel of a gun. I guess in a way it would be interesting. <laughs> I don't really change up my strategies a lot, so it doesn't really matter. Kill these guys here because they can actually kill you <laughs> if you don't, um, if you don't get lucky. So I just kill them. One of them stayed alive. I thought he was gonna kill me, but he didn't. And then we go up to the orphanage and we finish off chapter one with another think, like five-minute cutscene. Fuck if I know. But yeah, there are no more enemies throughout the entire chapter. Just kind of walk up here. Get a darkness power through a cutscene that you still can't use. That you didn't need to use. And then the darkness grabs Jackie. Not allowing him to do anything. That's the. That's supposed to be a ghost of like. We're well not ghost. More of a memory. I, I don't really understand it. <laughs> it's kind of like memories of Jackie and Jenny when they were in the orphanage. I don't. I don't really know. If it was up to me, I'd have blown her brains out already. Well, it's not. Fuck you. Why are you doing this? Here we have the main villain holding a gun to Jenny's head and Eddie Schrote, the police commander on the right. Not a lot to say about this cutscene. Well, 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 just in time. I heard you and your girlfriend grew up here, Estacado. What a shithole. Nose. And now the place looks like it was hit by a bomb. Oh, Get up. what's the matter? Don't know your ass from your elbow with all that demon shit? You, you know why we're here? As you heard me, Jackie. I took you in for my own. I trusted you, so now all this blood is on your hands. Jackie, what's going on? Get me out of here. Ah, shut the fuck up! No. You see a happy ending here, Jackie? You figure you got something to bargain with me so that I don't blow her fucking brains out her fucking nose? Because the way I see it, you I do like this cutscene. I don't know, <laughs> I guess... 
in some ways it's not very good, but I don't know. Like some fucking game we're playing here. You caused me a lot of trouble. I guess when you're first playing through the game, if you're not like <laughs> making fun of it the entire time you play, this is a pretty devastating cutscene. And you stole my trust. I guess. I don't really remember how I responded to it the first time I played through it. was a really long time ago. I think back in 2007 or 8. I take from you. Probably 2007. Which I think is when the game came out. I'm not quite sure on that. I've always found it cool how in this game you can actually see your reflection, <laughs> unlike a lot of games. Can you tell there's not a lot to say? But anyway, this is the introduction to the kind of hell place in this game, I guess. I guess when you kill yourself on holy ground, you get sent to hell, or what is the mind of the darkness? I don't really get it, I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea what's going on. But you're treated to a cutscene, very short one. I go to the left just at the beginning to grab two guns. You don't really need them, I guess, but it's nice to have the extra ammo. Ammo's not s not as scarce in the underworld section of the game. You get a pretty decent amount of guns. And this guy, you get his heart, and you have the Kamikaze Darkling. A Darkling that you will never see in this run, because I escape the trench right there with a pretty simple jump. Uh, I eat the heart because <clears throat> you actually can't jump over the trench until then. And what I'm doing with this barrel is setting up for probably the biggest glitch in the game. This is not the biggest use of it, but um, this is prop flying. Basically, if you grab an object with the demon arm, which I got at the beginning of the chapter, you can kind of fly on it. It's kind of a strange glitch, I guess. I mean, it's not that surprising. It's in a lot of games, but the way it works is kind of strange because uh, the physics and everything in this game are kind of weird. Like, you can't use that to climb walls unless the wall is slanted. And, yeah. But sometimes if you're up against a wall, the object will just drop. Like, it's really weird. I don't know. That. that was a pretty slow um, hovering segment there. It could have been a lot better. But that actually saves a good couple of minutes because you skip going in a bunker and having to use Kamikaze Darkling and Creeping Dark all over the place. <clears throat> and the Darklings are really terrible sometimes. They just won't cooperate as I explained back at um, uh, Dutch Oven Harry's when I got the Darkling to open the door there. Grab a gun through the window there. I've always loved that. I thought it's kind of cool. And here you have your great great grandfather. Because who needs a plot to make sense, right? I kind of jump around there because one time in a run, 
Um, he just stopped talking doing? and skipped to the end, even though I was right in front of him. He was in the middle of the first thing he said. It's never happened to me since, but I always jump there just in case. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe someday. So now we're heading to the hills to get the dark, bleh, the darkness guns. This is a pretty boring part of chapter two, unfortunately. Otherwise, chapter two is pretty good. I think it's, I think it's pretty fun. We don't give up. There's a small shortcut you can do here at the end, where if you put that bell in the corner, you can jump on it and get up to the door a little faster than it would be if you took the stairs at the back of the room. But the, it's like really hard to do for some reason. I don't quite understand why, but I would always find that I would kind of get stuck on it and it, I would just lose time, so I decided it wasn't worth trying. And I just kind of stopped doing it. I didn't really know where to put the bell, though, so I just kind of put that wherever. You'll kind of see as I go back that I forgot where I put it, so right before I run into it, I kind of dash to the right to avoid it. I take away the darkness there so that I can pull it out here, but it doesn't work for whatever reason, because <laughs> this game's great. Put away the guns, because... It only starts when you put away the guns, so it saves a little bit of time instead of talking to it and then having it put away on its own. Whatever. I'm sure you know what I mean. I'm sure you don't know what I mean. Use the weapons I'm very poor at explaining this. Or the darkness will consume your soul. And those are the darkness guns. That's the only time you'll ever see them in the run. The darkness guns are not really that useful for a speedrun, I would think, because they use darkness energy to fire. I don't actually know how strong they are. I never tested, like, their strength compared to other weapons. But the main reason you wouldn't want to use them is because they take up the darkness energy. And a lot of this run is trying to stay alive without having to take out um, lights or stand around in the darkness. There's me dashing around the bell. So having weapons take away your darkness energy would just kind of be a hassle to work with, I guess. I get stuck on a lot of walls in this run. I've been running the game for a year and a half, and I still get stuck on walls all the time. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. And now we're back in the village. That's a good Iron Maiden song. Continuing on back to Tony. There's a really annoying glitch here where if you mash A to talk to him, you found them? sometimes, instead of going into this conversation mode, he'll just talk to you normally and you won't be able to skip anything he's saying. And he talks for a long time. It's pretty bad. I think I lost only one run to it because <laughs> when it happened, I was just like, there's no way I'm ever going to let that happen again. So I just kind of delay before I actually talk to him. And now for the sewer. This part's kind of interesting. There's something important here that the darkness is trying to protect. I could feel its agitation. But if I stay the course... Everything you know is a lie. A great line. Anyway, small shortcut here that I found. You take this barrel and put it up against there, you don't have to climb up a small ladder. And you can just go straight to these stairs. Doesn't save that much time, but you know. I never really found anything that saves a huge amount of time in this game. I just found a bunch of really small shortcuts that overall I think would save more time than the bigger things other people found. I'm not quite sure. Maybe not. I just want to pretend that I actually contributed something to this game out of that way. Well, I guess I have. I've done a lot of testing, I guess. <laughs> Considering I'm the only one that runs the game.
And here's the final Darkling, the Light Killer. This is the only time you'll be seeing this. Because he's supposed to activate this pump, but you know, the Darkling AI is terrible. Like, sometimes he'll stand there for a good 10 seconds before he actually activates that pump. So, you can lose time on that, and it's not really your fault at all. Which sucks. But it's not that bad. <laughs> I kind of failed jumping down there. It's kind of funny. You don't take a lot of fall damage in this game. Like, you can't die from falling unless there's actually a death trigger while you're falling. It's kind of strange. Not that bad, though. And continuing on to the final stretch of Chapter 2. Eat this guy's heart so that I can save the darkness energy for the next part, because it's pretty full of lights and enemies, and I don't want to have to stop. So. Gotta prepare. Somewhere, somehow, the darkness is doing whatever it can to keep me alive. Because... You have to well, Turkey. I was always on your side. This part of the game's kind of laggy. I don't really know why. It's not really a much of a penalty for lag. I think I never really tested this, but it kind of looks to me like when the game's lagging, it just skips frames rather than slows down to show every single one. So lag reduction would only really make it easier to control in this game, I guess. I don't really understand it. There's a trick here to jump through that cannon shell up there, but it's really hard, and I didn't want to bother with it because it only saved like three seconds or so. But yeah, you can just jump right in that. It's not solid at all. So you can jump on the thing that's holding it, and then jump up to that door that I just went through, but it's really not worth doing. it's really likely that you'll fail. And if you do, then it's sometimes hard to recover because the jumping mechanics in this game are pretty bad. They're kind of random in a way. It kind of seems like the height of your jump um, is either random or affected by really strange things. Like, I might be wrong about this, but I think if you're against a wall when you jump, you don't jump as high. I don't know why, but it just seems that way to me. And this is the end of Chapter 2. Overall, that was a pretty decent Chapter 2. Could have gone better in some places, but... It's alright. And now, for whatever reason, we're back in the real world. This guy's not at all freaked out by the fact that you just appeared in this subway. We ignore Jimmy because he's a dick. And that pedestrian almost got in my way. I don't think I actually got stopped by any in this run. I'm not sure. But yeah. We're going to talk to Aunt Sarah now. Or Aunt Sarah. <laughs> I'm too used to how Jackie says it. But yeah, you can never actually skip talking to Aunt Sarah or Butcher, I believe. I think those are the only two people that you have to talk to every single time in this run. I don't know if there's anybody else. Like, you can't miss a phone call from Butcher. Um... Jack. I don't I've think so Aunt Sarah ever actually called you. I heard you were gone, and I, I but feared yeah. the worst. You look thin. Have you been eating? You come on inside. Come on. You want some minestrone? Hmm? Chapter three and five both start with you going to Aunt Sarah. <laughs> they start out pretty slow. But chapter 3 and 5 are definitely the best chapters in this game. Although chapter 3, 
I would you say is the I hardest for a speedrun. Hardest overall chapter. Because like there's just a lot I'm, that can go wrong, I guess. And <laughs> you're actually going to see some of that in this run. I had a really, really bad part in this chapter. It's kind of embarrassing, but... Jump over that railing there. I failed that in chapter 5, actually, I just remembered. <laughs> it's a silly jump, doesn't really save much time. Just kind of straight line rather than going around. I don't know. I go for some dumb time savers. <laughs> thought that guy was getting in my way. Oh, no, I did get stopped by this person. Because I thought they were going on the inside and then they took the outside. I forgot about her. Terrible people. Now we're heading to Gun Hill. Anyone who says the subway is dangerous... Never sat in the back of a yellow cab, going the wrong way, at 90 miles an hour, through the Midtown Tunnel, with a guy who can't speak a lick of English. Gun Hill has what I think is the coolest skip in this game, which you'll see coming up. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> there was actually a way to do this skip from the bottom. Basically, you have to go to the top of this apartment place, and I found a way to do it from the bottom. I'll point it out. It's right around this corner. Right here. You can actually climb up and do it from the bottom which I thought would save time but after timing it um, I found it doesn't save any time so you kill Abe there to take his key even though he's not not exactly a bad guy Jackie's just a dick and he wants to go fast who can blame him now for a long boring elevator ride in the dark I don't know, I kind of like this. It builds up suspense. <laughs> because this trick coming up is probably the hardest trick in the run. There's the audio fuck up again. Alright, so here it is. I have to shoot at that light so that I don't lose my darkness energy. Shoot out all of that window because you cannot get stuck on it. Shoot this table in half. Use the demon arm to put it out. Balance it up there. And now I can leave the apartment by using this couch as a ramp to get out of the window, which I shot out. And the reason I shot out all the parts are if you can get caught on one little part and it won't move. Now, using the prop jumping that you saw in the beginning of Chapter 2, I'm going to fly from right here to the end of the... The, the end of this mission. I could have done it a little faster, but that's pretty risky. Overall, that was pretty decent. And there's the end trigger, and the mission is now over. That skips um, quite a bit. Well, not actually, not, not quite a bit. But it's a decent amount, because doing that mission normally, you have to wait for a helicopter to appear, and I don't actually know what um, causes it to do what it's supposed to, but it's supposed to shoot out a wall and then you can continue on, but I don't know what causes it to shoot the wall, and you could just kind of stand there for a while waiting for it to do that, and then you would go through the apartments, just going all around, it's, I don't know, saves a good chunk of time. I think the first hover might save more time? I'm not quite sure. Since I didn't really find them, I never timed how much they save, but... I do know that they do save time for sure. And now I'm calling Butcher because I cannot get the key for the Turkish baths unless I call him. I've tried to get the key. It, it doesn't work. 
head over this way to the men's bathroom. to the Turkish Baths. Well, actually, City Hall first. But within there... There, uh, anyway. <laughs> within there are the Turkish Baths. I've tried forever to try and get here early by beating the train. There's no way. <laughs> I, I think, actually, if you jump against the railing, you just die before the train even hits you. Or, or at least it seemed like that one time. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I don't know. This game is pretty solid. Like, surprisingly solid. Yet at the same time, it's pretty broken, in a way. Because you can kind of get out of bounds in a lot of places really easily. But you can't do anything with any of the out of bounds. It's kind of strange. So that was a little prop jumping just to go faster. Kill that guy because he pops up later on and gets in your way. Um, but yeah, prop jumping is actually the fastest way to move in this game, basically. Because Jackie kind of goes at a little leisurely pace, like he's just going on a nice stroll through the park here. So, I try to prop jump whenever I can. Although, I don't know, sometimes it takes a long time to set up. There's the demon arm there to activate a trap early so that it doesn't hurt me. I actually made a mistake by putting away the darkness there. I didn't need to. Gotta shoot a small box in the wall. My aim is terrible. <laughs> my aim's not very good. For speedrunning a fucking first person shooter game, my aim is bad. There, I made a small mistake. I forgot to get in the actual dark. And now I use the creeping dark to open a door <laughs> when you're actually supposed to. And I use it to open those four chains. And I do that from up there so that I don't activate a little poison gas down there, which starts to hurt you a lot. Kill this guy, and now you get the black hole. Now we have all the darkness powers. However, this part is really dumb. <laughs> that light is really hard to shoot out. And for some reason, the black hole never pulls that gate up high enough. Like, I don't know why, but it seems like you always have to fire it twice. I think it might be because I'm at a lower level than I should be for this part in the game, so it kind of runs out before it pulls it up all the way. But yeah, that's annoying. I never really got that part very quickly. I don't know. I'm generally bad at most of the City Hall and Turkish Baths part, <laughs> as you'll see coming up. Oh my god, this part's embarrassing. Like, <laughs> just just skip past it. Come on. You don't want to watch this. Right? I know you don't. Right? Courtesy of good old Butcher Joyce. All I gotta do is get through half a right? legion of bank cops. And here we go. Turkish baths. Turkish baths is kind of interesting. Pretty hard though. All this shit's here, so you gotta use the black hole. I put it in a really bad spot, but apparently it still broke everything. So whatever. <laughs> I have no problem with that. And then, <laughs> as any good game does. Gotta use your new power again, just to make sure you know how to use it. That wall's really weird though, sometimes it doesn't break. Shoot out that light so that I can absorb some darkness energy here. I was really low on ammo here, so I was kind of scared of what to do here. That was a really bad mistake. I apparently changed powers without realizing it. Here's where it gets really bad. I don't manage to kill that guy very easily, so I have to back up, get more energy. Then I'm trying to find him and shoot him, and it just doesn't go well. I think I killed another guy in that little tunnel there by using that black hole. And then this guy up here never wants to die, so I shoot a black hole, and I'm like, alright, must have killed him. Nope, I didn't kill him. But at this point, I was just kind of like, fuck it. Or, no, okay, I didn't do that yet. Yeah, see, like, I don't know what's going on here. I realize I don't have a lot of ammo. I've got to start moving before I just stand there wasting too much time. So I'm just kind of like, fuck it. Do this little shortcut where I jump and grab that at the same time so it gains a little bit of height. Allows me to get up to the second floor. And now I'm up here. I still don't have a lot of ammo though. So I'm trying to make do with what I have. Get in here. 
accidentally execution kill that guy, but that's not so bad because it guarantees that he dies. Grab the briefcase, and they give you a bunch of guns right there, so that's pretty good. But at this point, I realize I don't have a lot of darkness energy. Thankfully, this guy appears out of fucking nowhere. Eat his heart, and I get full energy. Because this part is extremely hard. So get down there. And there are a bunch of <laughs> SWAT guys with riot shields who are extremely hard to get unless you use a black hole. But they're hard to actually get. Um, well, hard to get with like less than full energy. Those barrels are like always giving me trouble. I don't know how to get past those consistently. <laughs> like I said, this part is kind of embarrassing. Like, I don't believe how poorly I did this part. I'm just glad it's over. Let's forget that happened, okay? I could probably save a good amount of time there, but it's not enough for me to actually want to do the entire game over because there are a lot of parts of this run that went really well that I think would be hard to match. And I would just basically be losing time everywhere else except for here, and like that just that's not worth doing to me. I'll only run this game if something big is found again. <laughs> or if I'm really bored, I guess. But I want to focus on 100%. I was kind of disoriented here. I thought I was in a different spot of the map. I thought I was right here. This part is also very hard because this is where they find out your weakness. Lights. So they fucking turn on all those lights. And all these SWAT guys here are really powerful. I don't know why, but they can kill you really quickly. I play it really safe here by shooting that black hole. I don't usually do that, but I was just feeling like I needed to kill them. Go in here, try and fire a black hole in the middle. Doesn't work, so I kind of back off a bit. These guys, these three guys have killed me, like, way too many times. Thankfully, I make it past decently. It's not too hard from here on, it's just the very end of City Hall that could give me trouble. These two guys aren't too bad. And there are a couple guys behind that wall, so just fire a black hole. Get this guy's heart so that I get full darkness energy again. And as soon as I turn the corner, I have full darkness energy. Run as close as I can, fire a black hole in the middle of them. Kills almost all of them. And I'm good to go. The end of City Hall was pretty good. Fight fire Turkish bath. With fire. That's what I always say. I just realized a lot of my commentary there was just narrating what was going on, but I don't know. <laughs> this is my first time ever doing a commentary for something. I've realized I'm pretty terrible at it, but whatever. It's not like there will be anybody else to do commentary for this game. Anyway, going in here to see Butcher, again, well, can't skip talking to him, because he puts a bomb in the suitcase no that you just got, or the briefcase, whatever. Is you there a difference between a suitcase and a briefcase? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, he just does that. I love Jackie's response right here. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Something about it is just kind of funny. It's bad, basically. Can't skip this cutscene for whatever reason. Continue on. That's Eddie. Gonna call him. What? What? And now we're heading to the end of chapter three. Another somewhat difficult part of the chapter. Well, all the parts of the chapter are actually pretty difficult. It's kind of like there's three things in the chapter. Gun Hill, used to be the only person um, City Hall, Turkish Baths, and now, Trinity Church. The only person which are all kind of hard for different reasons, I guess. Gun Hill is the difficult skip. Turkish Baths is, um, I guess, hard to maneuver and kind of hard to kill enemies. I guess. I'm not really sure how to explain it. And the shootout is just kind of 
I don't know. I guess if you're really unlucky or like you make a lot of poor decisions, uh, it'll be pretty easy to die. But overall, it's more so difficult to do quickly, I guess. A lot of this game is actually difficult to do quickly, but not that bad to actually do. I guess. <laughs> I don't really know. Small shortcut here to just jump over the wall, which I failed a bunch. I don't know why. Like, I cannot figure out why I couldn't get over that. It's just kind of the... Like I said, the jumping is really weird in this game. The I think the height kind of differs. I don't know what it is. That's where it's full. Why this place? Filthy oh, church. I know you keep your word, Jackie boy. And I see you brought my stuff. Just like you brought it. Go ahead. Put it on the altar. Nice and slow. Drop the briefcase there. Yeah, that's what I love about criminals. You can always be relied on to make the dumbest mistakes possible. Remember that line. Like they train you guys to be dipshits on command. Kendall, turn off the lights. Look at him right here. Did you hear what he said? Dumbest mistakes possible. He turns off the lights. I don't know. Doesn't seem like a very good choice. Especially since it's pretty clear he knows about the darkness. But yeah, this is the shootout. Basically, it's just a bunch of SWAT guys up above, shooting down at you. Sometimes they drop down and will try to get you. They all have assault rifles, so they're pretty powerful. Um, a lot of what this fight is, is uh, me summoning a gunner darkling so that he'll shoot at enemies so I can know where they are. Plus, he'll distract some of them. And then I just kind of shoot black holes up and shoot them whenever I can. But black holes are way easier for killing them. So this is where they bring out floodlights. Not really much of a challenge. Although apparently I couldn't shoot this one. <laughs> but yeah, they're not they don't pose too much of a challenge. And then you're just killing more of them. That guy up there in the back, I don't know why, but he is really hard to kill sometimes. I I'm pretty lucky for actually killing him that quickly in this run. I'm surprised. kind of blind firing there because I don't know sometimes it's hard to find the guys in here because the gunner darkling won't be shooting and they'll be kind of hiding so I just kind of have to blindly fire black holes in hopes that I get somebody this fight could have been faster but overall it was pretty decent nothing to really complain about I guess I think this is where I couldn't find somebody for a bit yeah and then started shooting at me so I knew where he was. I think that was the last guy. Yep. Now for a interrogation part, I suppose. I bet you feel like a tough guy full of those tricks in the dark. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out your weakness. to the land of the living but don't get this is just another end of chapter cutscene basically that you really can't do a lot to speed up well there is one thing at the end now tell me well, two things <laughs> but for the most part this is just hit at the turkey's baths a small cutscene oh what's the matter helpless without that screwy shit you've been pulling in the darkness too light here isn't it you're mine now Ah, uh, let's get creative. You don't have to talk. I'm gonna have fun either way. Go give me that power drill. Sure thing, Eddie. It ain't Eddie, you fucking moron. It's Captain Shrope. Ah, oh, shit, sorry. Sure thing, Captain Shrope. Now, I'm gonna tell you how this works. 
You tell me who helped you out on the hit at the turkey's baths. You tell me who saw the briefcase. You play ball and you can die quickly. Otherwise, you get little holes drilled in the pain centers of your brain. And believe me, I've done this work before. You may think you're a tough kid, but you don't want to go that second route. You know, you made Polly real nervous. That little turd is so paranoid, I gotta keep him in a safe place until the heat dies down. Now say your prayers. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at... Oh, Mother of God. That's a good one, boss. I mean, considering the shipment we got coming in. Well, don't tell him, you stupid shit! What's the difference? Who's he gonna tell? Won't make any difference if he knows about the... You said we was gonna waste him. Oh, yeah. We're gonna waste him. And if you say one more word about Mother of God, we're gonna waste you next! Yeah, a lot goes on during this cutscene. <laughs> Here you go. I guess it's kind of... Feel a little comedic in a way. Doesn't exactly take itself seriously. Damn it. You're all Which I can appreciate. God damn it. <laughs> but it just kind of drags on the cutscene. After you've seen it a couple of times. What great commentary. I'm sitting here laughing at the fucking game. Where were we? <laughs> oh, yeah. And this is where you get your mouth drilled. Pretty sweet. And now comes five conversation options. I choose the bottom three because they are the fastest. You don't actually need to do all of them. I thought that you did for the longest time, but um, after doing some testing, I realized you only have to actually watch three of them, and then during the fourth one you can just tap the darkness iron button. That usually happens in the fifth one. It'll kind of like prompt you with uh, uh, just a little on-screen thing. But I discovered that it actually happens one conversation option earlier, I suppose. All that really happens here is they're blocking the light, so you get more darkness energy, I guess. I don't really understand it. Well, I do understand it, but it's just kind of strange, I guess. it's going to take to repair all that damage you've done? Dark bliss. One more conversation option. You realize no one's getting out of this alive, right? You know, Estacado, I never did like Pauli Franchetti. If I didn't have to kill you, I'd buy you a drink for what you did. You low life fucking red bastard. Die, you fuck. <laughs> Amazing vocabulary. Can Rivals only my own. Eddie's ass. You cunts. Polish his sweet fuck crack. And... Here's the end of chapter three. And that... <sighs> that was the second time. That's right, we are going back to Hell or the Mind of the Darkness. You don't know what you've done. So we're back in the canon where we left off in Chapter 2. And even though that canon shell I was talking about in Chapter 2 exists, apparently it just doesn't work. So this entire chapter is basically getting a cannon shell for this cannon to enter the castle behind me to face the darkness or whatever. I've spent a lot of time in this chapter 
a lot of fucking time in this chapter trying to find a way into that castle or into the place where the bullet is early. Because other than that, almost all of this chapter is a rail shooter. And it's boring as hell. Like, it's not even action-packed, because <laughs> you can't die. Like, I've tested it a couple times. You cannot die during the rail sections. It's just you walk to the village, and then rail shooters. But yeah. Basically, I guess I'll just use this time to talk about some breaks that I've tried in the game, because there's not a lot to talk about otherwise. Um, basically, at the end of uh, the rails up by the cannon here, there's a barrel. And as you witnessed in Chapter 2, barrels can break the game. So what I tried to do for the longest time is prop fly to the right of the castle and get behind it and see if I could get in through there. But around the castle is a plane. And the plane just shoots you every once in a while and it would always knock me off the barrel also this is a small shortcut to get up there quickly but I really fucked it up here <laughs> yeah this is kind of a bad moment but every other run kind of messed up the jump for a really long time this run I just messed up getting up to where you do the jump and then I got it first try but anyway c continuing on about breaks that I never got to work in this chapter I was trying to fly around the castle, got hit by the plane every time. Then I realized the darkness guns, which <laughs> I've talked about multiple times being useless, can actually shoot down the plane in a couple shots. So uh, for the longest time I was like, oh my god, this is going to lead to such a big break because I can do whatever. No. Not you. You know what's on the side of the castle? Inside the side of a castle. So no Nothing. Nothing else. No. Even though there's no fucking way you should be able to get there. No way at all. There's still a part of the castle there. <laughs> also, the audio might desync here. I didn't really check this part because it's boring as hell. But, um... Yeah, so I was trying that for the longest time. Never worked. Then I tried walking on the rails to where you get the cannon shell. Only to discover that the door is closed no surprise and there's like no way to walk around or anything so then I look to the right of the place where the cannon shell is and I see there's this big mountain on the side so what I do is go back to the cannon set up the barrel on a rock near it hover across the like ocean of I don't know what the hell it is <laughs> but hover all the way across takes me way too many tries get over there, drop the barrel. So, I walk over there and I'm like, alright, what's going on here? I get up there, I'm right beside, trying to walk in, invisible wall. There is an invisible wall blocking me from getting in there. And there are actually invisible walls fucking everywhere out, out of bounds in this game. Like, it's terrible. I don't understand it. Like, you get out of bounds anywhere, like there's no ground below you or anything, there are still invisible walls everywhere. In the village, in the underworld, I found... No, actually, I didn't find it. Uh, somebody on YouTube found a way to get out of bounds really easily by jumping on a horse's head and then a light. I know that sounds strange, but whatever. But yeah, you can get out of bounds really easily that way. And you're just kind of walking on nothing because it's out of bounds. So I saw that, and I'm like, oh, maybe I can use that to get to the hills early or to get to the sewers early and skip the darkness guns. No, no, no. Absolutely not. No way. There are invisible walls everywhere and I don't get why it's frustrating because I want to break this game I want this game to be broken I don't care how hard the tricks are like if they can skip huge chunks of chapters that would be amazing because I feel like this game has the potential definitely definitely has the potential to be a broken as hell game because like I don't know you can get out of bounds in so many places like, you can walk under the water at Pier 19, which you'll be seeing in Chapter 5. Well, you won't be seeing walking under the water. 
But yeah, you can walk under the water there. You can walk across all the buildings there. You can get inside the church at the end of chapter 3. There, there's another interesting one. You can get on top of the church um, at the end of chapter 3 from the beginning of the chapter. Like, you can just use a mattress that you find um, down by the guy that you shoot to actually activate the first darkness cutscene. Yeah, you can get a mattress down there. Bring that over to uh, around the church and use it in a way to actually gain a bunch of height and get up and then get on the roof. Then from there, you can hover up to a little room above the door only to find out that they put a little floor there to make sure that you can't fall down to the door. Like, I don't know. Like, were they expecting you to be able to get up there? I, I don't get it. <laughs> like, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. At all. What other breaks have I not been able to find? Hmm. I don't really know of any others. But yeah. I just feel like this game is like one trick or something away from being incredibly broken. Like, if you could clip through walls, or just, like, teleport to where the Creeping Dark is, I know that sounds dumb as hell, but... If you could do that, this game would be broken as hell. But, as of yet, nothing. Whatever. I'm hoping eventually there will be at least one other person that picks up this game and they happen to be like a glitch master. Because unfortunately, I'm not very good at finding glitches. I can find small shortcuts, small things, but I have never found a big glitch in this game. I've had a couple people tell me that they want to run the game, but I haven't seen it yet. Anyway, here's... I guess some kind of pseudo-boss? Like, I don't know what this is supposed to be. But all you do here is just hold R and aim at him. I guess you can kind of get lucky with how many times he does the fast attacks, like kind of push you over to the side really fast like that. But well, overall, this is basically just another part of the rail shooter, except you can actually die here. I don't understand how. <laughs> like I've never died here um, for the last <laughs> few years, basically. I guess I did one time when I was playing, probably on like hard mode or something. I don't remember. This runs on easy because that's faster. So now we're out of the rail shooter. <laughs> Not for long though. And now, we're back to where we actually started this chapter, except behind the doors that I was talking about earlier at the end of the rails. As I said earlier, the creeping dark can be used to activate some switches. This is a very literal example of that. Because I guess by switches I kind of mean just things that will advance uh, the game basically like I use it later on to uh, get to a guy that I would otherwise have to uh, walk through an entire ship to get to I guess I don't know you'll see it you'll see what I mean don't worry I'm building up suspense trust me I always try to shoot this guy on the bridge but I don't think I've ever killed him. Like, I, I know I'm hitting him there. He 
just doesn't die. I always get this guy though. But yeah, that guy on the bridge doesn't die. Except for there. I really like the Darkness's voice in this part. Mike Patton did a really good job with the Darkness's voice in this game. In the Darkness 2, I think it sounds like shit, but I'm not going to spend this time ranting about how much I don't like the Darkness 2. <laughs> I probably could have spent this entire time talking about it. Castle now. A lot of people have asked me while I'm streaming why I look at the ground while I'm running like this. The answer is I don't know. I just kind of end up doing that when I'm walking for whatever reason. I don't know why. It just kind of happens. This is the heart of the darkness. It's where the creature dwells. So here's another <laughs> kind of pseudo boss fight. I say that because like it's so it's kind of set up to be like a boss battle, but it just doesn't feel like one because it's just so simple. I guess these things like take the darkness power out of you and like put it on that whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't played this game normally for nearly two years. I don't really remember what the hell's going on. You can move in this little cutscene where it shows the body there. So I try to get to um, these things in that, but I can't really see where I'm going. So I usually don't end up where I want to be. And so now, for whatever fucking reason, the darkness gets the, some body of its own. So, um, here's the crazy hard strategy for this boss. Put away your weapons, walk up to him. Now walk up to him again. Good fight. And that's not just because I'm playing on the easiest difficulty either. That's how it is on every difficulty. It's just pointless. I don't know. <laughs> it was trying to be like, you accept the darkness or whatever? I don't know. They were kind of trying too hard with that one. <laughs> well, yeah. That's the end of chapter four. We are now on the final chapter of the darkness. Wake up outside the orphanage for whatever Catch fucking reason. <laughs> and now for the most subway action you're going to see for the entire run. Because like I said, chapter 3 and 5 start with talking to Aunt Sarah. So I had to take a subway to get to Canal Street. And then she's going to tell me to go back to Fulton, and it's just, oh, it's kind of annoying. Ignore Vinny. And it's such a pain, too, because the train, subway, whatever, always gets away from you as soon as you get to it, like at the beginning of this chapter and the next time you get you go to get on it <laughs> it's annoying 
I think one time I made it before it got away. I don't remember. I think that might have just been kind of the game fucking up or something. Because it seems like it's supposed to do that. Maybe it's that Because I've never gotten on it otherwise. Like, you never even get close. Yeah. Just feels weird. Way too obvious. I figured it had to be something else. Now I knew that Aunt Sarah and Butcher were ready to see Schrot and Paulie's asses on a platter. I've already got I'm always really disoriented whenever I enter Lower East Side in this chapter. I don't know why. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but I just never know where I'm facing. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. You're gonna see it again <laughs> once I come back here. Oh, <laughs> I just think it's kind of funny. The Lord. <sighs> Holy catfish! Jackie? Jackie? Is that you? This problem with your Uncle Paulie has gone on long yeah, now enough, just Jackie. Some more discussions <laughs> between the characters. I think the decision has just about made it safe. Unfortunately, anyway, these ones you can't walk them. away and, like, kind of cut them off and make them skip to the end. Know what they can do to this end. one kind of does the opposite. If you walk away, they start over, which is really annoying. The Chicago family boat. It's been running shipments of drugs into the harbor for years. Knowing Eddie, he wouldn't resist a chance to talk about it to a dying man. <laughs> he always did have diarrhea in the mouth. Especially if there's something big going on. Chicago family's gonna be real interested in what happens here, Jackie. This is gonna be your best chance to get Paulie out of the picture for good. You just say the word. And I'll help if I can. I wanna... I need... You got... And now we're heading to Grinder's Lane again. Oh, this is where I fuck up the jump. This is kind of funny. <laughs> I go to get over a bunch of times. I'm like, I can't get over. <laughs> I walk back. Try to do it again. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking there. <laughs> it's funny, though. But yeah, we're heading back to Grinder's Lane now. This is a much shorter visit. Don't know what the hell that guy was doing. But yeah, like I said, subway gets away from you again. And then you gotta wait around for it to come back. Standing on the tracks makes it come a little faster, I think. I'm not sure if it actually changes it if you're standing near or on the tracks, but... I don't know. Never really tested it. I used to jump in and out of train tracks down here when I was a little kid. You know, those of us who survived, we really loved that game. Tell you what. During the war, they used to have this saying. You got a ton of monologues in this chapter. Sink ships. Now I know what they mean. And soon the Chicago families will know too. Some of them are kind of corny. All I need is that re So yeah. This visit to Grinders Lane is supposed to be a lot longer. You're supposed to go to the front, go in through the back of Grinders Lane, basically, and make your way through some little like housing area to get in. But what I do is stand on this hydrant, jump on that little container thing, and get right to where I need to go. Then go back out, jump back over. That car can actually kill you, so I kind of wait around to make sure that it doesn't hit me. And then we're back out again in no time at all.
much better Grinders Lane visit than the first. This is the last you'll be seeing of Fulton Station. I don't actually know where the doors are <laughs> for the subway I'm at Fulton, so I just kind of guess. I know exactly where they come, uh, well, one of them comes uh, at Canal, so I always wait for it there. Funny story. The record previous to this one at this point of the run, instead of going to Lower East Side, I went to Trinity Church. Because I wasn't thinking at all. And I, I got halfway up and I'm like, wait, hold on, this doesn't look right. And then I realized I was going the wrong way and I was like, shit, what am I doing? And then I started hurrying back to Lower East Side. It was kind of funny. Lost like 30 seconds from that. But it doesn't matter, because that run, <laughs> I fucked up pretty bad earlier on. Actually, that was a no-reset run, which is why I had the record for that, with that one, just because it was a no-reset one. Not only that, and I died twice at the end in that run. <laughs> Lost a minute there alone. So now we're heading to Pier 19. To go to the boat, kill the captain, to piss off the Chicago families. That guy tries to mug you. Picks a fight with the wrong guy. I eat his heart just so that I have full darkness energy for the beginning of Pier 19. <clears throat> Pier 19 is actually where you end the game, but this is not where... Um, well, not where you end it, but... The second to last place you go, basically. But this isn't the second last... Um, part, I guess. I can't really word that well. Or he won't get a chance. I'm here that black hole shot is really hard to do. I don't know why. I also kind of fucked this up badly because I didn't kill that guy for a while. So I had full energy by the time I went to eat his heart. So that was a waste. And then I tried to prop fly on this car all the way to the ship. But I fucked it up and it stops right there. So I th think had I not tried to fly on it I would have saved more time. But it's not that bad. <clears throat> so this is an interesting strategy that I came up with when I was trying to do the ship as fast as possible, as safe as possible. Alright, so what happens here is I kill that guy, eat his heart so that I'm at full darkness energy, and then I send the creeping dark up to the top of the ship. Because down in there to the left that I just went by, that's where the captain is, but I can't just go in the window. You have to go down this way, through this door. But here's the thing. The Creeping Dark does not have enough energy to get there in one go. So what I do is, open the door. Opening the door spawns two guys up above that are supposed to get you when you're leaving. So, by killing this guy, eating his heart, I have enough energy from here to go to the captain and kill him without ever leaving the bottom of the ship. I think it's a really cool strategy. I kind of fucked this part up, though. I couldn't break the table. <laughs> so then I went to try and get him, and I got stuck on, like, part of the table, and I was really panicking here, because if he hits the creeping dark, then it retracts, and then I don't have enough energy, because I needed that heart to get to the captain. Thankfully, I got him right at the end. Like, as soon as I... As soon as I bit him, the creeping dark retracted. That was not me doing that. That was me running out of darkness energy. So I was very lucky to get that last bite in. Alright, this end part of Pier 19 is really difficult. I had to practice this a lot. So I kind of go slow here just to make sure that I survive. Because otherwise, um, I don't know, it's really easy to die. This car landed in a really good spot. I kind of got to hide behind it while I got closer to these guys. And then shot a black hole there. But it didn't get any of them, which was really bad. Thankfully, I was able to take three of them out, and this guy didn't really give me too much trouble. 
So overall, that was a pretty decent um, Pier 19. And now there is a shootout at Aunt Sarah's place. Next thing I know, I got Jimmy the Grape and everybody all hold up at Aunt Sarah's place. While Paulie's boys crawl This part is kind of interesting because since you're around people that you actually know, you can't use your darkness powers. So you have to actually try and survive, not just kind of eat as many hearts as you can kind of thing, right? I think it's interesting. I ran out of darkness energy here, so I was kind of careful about killing those guys. And then, I didn't go to eat one of their hearts, I'm not sure why, but that means I didn't have any Darkness Energy to protect me from these guys, thankfully they didn't give me a lot of trouble, and then I got that guy's heart, so I was good. But you can actually die on the way to the house, like, <laughs> this guy right here, or the two guys over by the car over there can kill you. <laughs> it's kind of bad. They didn't get me though. And this is the shootout. Go in here. This guy with like one arm keeps producing guns for you, which is really useful. Good way to stock up for the end as well as this part. I have a slight strategy for this place, but this place seems kind of random. I don't know, it's strange. Like, it kind of seems where the enemies will be. Not where they'll be, but like, the order that they'll appear in sometimes is kind of strange. A bunch of guys come from this uh, subway there. That's where I realized that gun wasn't doing me too good, so I switched the assault rifle. I shot that guy because I don't think he was dead, even though he definitely was. And I know there's supposed to be a guy behind that car. There he is. I didn't see him at first. Basically, those two cars there are going to be a bunch of guys running to for a while. They can go on either side of that car, and it kind of sucks when they run to the far side because I have to change which window I'm shooting from, which isn't that bad, but... Oh, this guy's funny. I don't know why this happened, but this guy, instead of hiding behind where he's supposed to, decides that he's just going to run wherever the hell. Like, I've never seen anybody run from their hiding spot over there over to that car? Like, I've never seen them do that. I thought it was pretty funny. I guess the AI was kind of acting up, didn't really know what to do. Take that guy out. When he says kill them all, then some guy runs through that tunnel, and then you can take out whoever's left, but I guess that guy was the last one. And this is where I set up for a cool trick that I discovered. I'll explain it in just a second. <clears throat> just kind of sitting on this bookcase here. Crouched. And Butcher comes up and lifts it. I'm not supposed to be that far in, so I can walk behind him. You have to activate the conversation with him, though. So now, the game thinks that I'm inside the house and he's talking to whoever while I'm out here picking up all these guns that were left behind. This trick would be very useful if you didn't have to go back in to talk to Jimmy. If you didn't have to talk to Jimmy, this would save a good two minutes, maybe? Not two minutes. I think it would be more, more, more like a minute and a half. But, since you have to talk to him, once I've got all the guns, I have to go back and stand right about here. He's out there. Because since I've gotten out, that means that Butcher's in a good spot where I can get back out if I talk to Jimmy fast enough. So I have to wait until he's prompting me to talk, run in, talk to him, and then run back out before Butcher turns all the way around. It saves 20 seconds rather than the minute and 30 that it should. I was very disappointed by that. <laughs> I th still think it's a cool trick, though. And run in, talk to him, That's get by Butcher, 
That was pretty clean. Sometimes you can get stuck on Butcher and still make it out. Like, I think I got stuck on my last run on him. Funny thing about this trick, though, is... Um, the game still thinks that you're in the house. So you can't pull out the darkness. You can't pull out your guns. You can't do anything. So I can't, like, prop fly on the car all the way to the pier. Which is what I used to do, even though I don't really think that saves that much time. Because I took way too long to set it up every time. Something interesting about it, though, is that it carries over to Pier 19. I don't know why, but in Pier 19, close. you can't pull out the darkness and you can't pull out your guns. Yeah, real close. It's strange. But, I can feel the darkness twisting. but yeah, this is the final stretch of the game right here. Once we get to the end, it's probably the hardest part of the game. Hardest single part. Chapter 3, as a chapter, is the hardest chapter. The lighthouse is the hardest part. And I'll explain why when we get there. There's the boat that takes you to the lighthouse. I spent a lot of time trying to find that out of bounds, but I don't think it's actually loaded until this part of the game, which really sucks, because that would take you just like right to the end immediately. But... Uh, they had to be decent game developers. Bunch of dicks. End of story. Final little monologue here. Except I'm not the one lining up for the last rites. It's my loving Uncle Polly. He knows the end of the story as well as I do. But he don't. So, this is why it's so difficult. This is the only part of the game where it is the day. Well, it's the day at the beginning of the first cutscene, but you don't have the darkness then. I have the darkness now, and it's the day. Funny little strategy here. Jumping in the water and canceling the cutscene of swimming back to shore is faster than walking. But yeah, right now I can't pull out the darkness, and if I do manage to get it out, it drains very quickly. So these guys can take me out really easily. Like, I am very vulnerable at this point. So I'm taking it extremely slowly, because I do not want to die. It is so easy to die here. Thankfully, these guys are pretty cooperative in, like, not shooting me. So I was able to eat every heart that I wanted to and survive uh, most of my way up there. Like, I was surprised at how well this went so far. Probably didn't need to eat that heart, but I don't know. It's a lot better to be safe here than try and take a risk and die. Especially at the end of the game. Like, it's such a disappointment, but I don't know. <laughs> the previous run, as I said, died here twice. And was still faster than the other run, which is kind of funny. Well, I guess, actually, the run before that, even though it was deathless, um,. It was only the first run I had done after uh, installing the game to my Xbox 360, so... I don't know, it wasn't that good of a run. Okay, this part is really scary. This is where they flick on the lights and start shooting the hell out of you. I almost died here because I couldn't find that guy and eat the heart. Like, I was scared shitless right here. Because if I had gotten shot once more, one more time, I would have been dead right at the end of a good run like this. But thankfully, I make it to the trigger, and we can enjoy one last cutscene before the final run to the end. My has from the this is where the darkness kind of takes over, I guess. It's just kind of senseless gore cutscenes. Well, not really gore. It's not that gory. Just senseless killing, I guess. Nothing wrong with that. kind of have to walk forward there for whatever reason. I don't really know why. There's small things you have to do at this part to make it advance. Like, kind of walk forward every once in a while. Oh my god! 
But yeah, from here on, there's not really a lot else to the run. Just enjoying the end. is that after all that <laughs> you end up back at the start and then you have to go through like every little part that you just saw even though it's pretty clear you've already been through there and get back up to that little spot that you were at there I don't know, I don't really understand it there are usually more guys in your way but apparently only that guy wanted to get in my way Every time I get to this part, I always think that I forget where to go, and then remember, like, as soon as I get control of where I'm supposed to be going. It's kind of strange. I don't know. And this is the final, the final stretch of the final stretch, basically. Just run up here after Polly. Take this ladder to get up quicker. The problem with you is you never learned how to listen. Shoot him. Get this little cutscene. Listen. I kind of wish he was actually a boss rather than like you shoot him once and he falls over. Why don't you fucking listen to me, you piece of shit? But whatever. And as soon as I shoot him, the run is over. And there you go. <laughs> that is the darkness. In one hour, 47 minutes, 51 seconds. And now, the end cutscene. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it very much. Um, if you want to see more of the darkness, you should subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Indexstick. Follow me on Twitch, also Indexstick. I'll be doing the darkness 100% now. We'll be working on that for a bit, and then I'll try and get some runs in. Hopefully finish that as soon as I can. And... There's always a little light well, in the darkness. Enjoy the end. Didn't I tell you Thank so you for soon. watching. Goodbye. Jenny? We get one moment, Jackie. It's all they can allow. What? Who? Just one moment. Just to say goodbye. You were everything to me. And all I ever did was kill you. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I can't forgive you, Jackie. How can I forgive you when it wasn't your fault? You have to go now. I don't want to go. I want to stay here with you. I know.
Am I dreaming? Yes. You have to wake up now. <laughs> 